All right, today's lesson, we are going to cover 11.8, and we are multiplying and dividing our radical expressions. And again, that should say radical instead of rational. All right, so I think for the multiplication, some of this will just kind of make sense. We've done a little bit of it before. So if you have the square root of 3 times the square root of 8x, basically there's a property in math that says that you can multiply those together underneath the same square root. So this gives us the square root of 24x. And then you want to see if you can do any reducing of your answer for your final answer. So if you look at first the 24, we can break that down into a 4 and a 6. So you have a 2 square root of 6. And then look at the x. Do we have enough x's to take the square root? No, we don't. So that x is just going to stay in there with the 6. And that will be our final answer. 2 times the square root of 6x. All right, this next one, if you're squaring something, remember that just means to multiply it twice. All right, now when you do this, um, we're basically multiplying straight across the board here. 6 times the square root of 2 times the 6 times the square root of 2. So go ahead and multiply the like parts. So for example, we'll do the 6 times the 6 and get 36. And then we'll do the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4. Now let's take a look at that square root of 4. We actually know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So really we have 36 times 2, which is 72. All right, some other things that you will see with multiplying is something that looks like distributing. So for this example, you have the square root of 2 on the outside of a set of parentheses. You have two terms on the inside, and we are just going to distribute that square root of 2 to both terms. So the square root of 2 times 5, if you notice, this is a square root of 2. This is not a square root of anything. So you can't actually multiply those together and get 10. It's 2 times the square root of 5, and we're going to rewrite it as 5 times the square root of 2. You always want that number that's not under the square root to go out in front. All right, now when we distribute to the second term, because they both have the square root, they both have that radical, we can go ahead and multiply those together. So plus the square root of 2 times 12 is 24. All right, now we want to make sure that our radicals are simplified. So the square root of 2 cannot be broken down anymore. The square root of 24 can. We can break that down into a 4 and a 6. So really you have 2 square roots of 6. I'm just going to carry it on the rest of the problem. Plus 5 square root of 2. Now are these like terms that we can add together? One is a square root of 2. One is a square root of 6. They're not the same. So our final answer is going to look like that. All right, this next one, you can see we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. Well, any time that we do that, we are going to FOIL this out. So we multiply our first, times, first terms. 4 times 3 is 12. Then we do 4 times a negative, if you notice that is a minus right there, a negative square root of 5. Well, the positive times the negative will be negative, and they're not both square roots, so I can't multiply them to say 20. It just becomes 4 square root of 5. All right, then we multiply the inside term. Square root of 5 times 3 is a positive 3 square root of 5. And then square root of 5 times a negative square root of 5 this is going to be minus the square root of, because they're both square roots, that one you can actually multiply together. All right, we've got some work we can do to clean this up. I'm going to bring down the 12. Now this negative 4 square root of 5 and positive 3 square root of 5, because they both have square roots of 5, those are like terms. So negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1 square root of 5. And then minus, do we know what the square root of 25 is? Yes, we do. That's a 5. All right, final answer. We've got the 12 minus the 5 that can go together. So 12 minus 5 is 7. And then we'll just carry down our minus square root of 5. And there's our answer after foiling. 
All right, here's our last slide. I only have a couple examples on this because there's a video for this with some more good examples as well. Um, when you divide radical expressions, you can't leave a radical in the denominator. So if you notice, these two examples have a square root in the denominator. That can't happen in math. So we have to do this thing called rationalizing the denominator. So what it means to rationalize the denominator, this first example, the square root of 2 over the square root of 7, you're going to multiply the denominator, basically that radical in the denominator, by itself. So I'm going to multiply the bottom times the square root of 7. Here's why we do that. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49. And what's the square root of 49? 7. So it just gets us back to the 7 without the square root. Well, if you're going to multiply the bottom times the square root of 7, you have to multiply the top times the square root of 7. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 7 becomes the square root of 14. Can you reduce the square root of 14? Do any perfect squares fit into it? They do not, so that stays as the square root of 14. Now, it might be tempting to take the 14 and divide it by the 7, but they're not like terms that we can actually divide. This isn't a 14, it's a square root of 14. So because this one has the radical, the square root, and this one does not, we cannot reduce those together. So this is our final answer. All right, the next one. We're looking at a problem that has a radical in the denominator, so we multiply it by itself. Remember, multiply the top by that also. So on the top, you're going to have the square root of 8 times the square root of 5x. You can go ahead and multiply those together and get 40x, because they're both square roots over, now the square root of 5x times the square root of 5x is just 5x. Okay, now this top has a square root, the bottom does not, so we can't do any reducing between the top and the bottom. We can, however, see if we can um, simplify anything in the numerator. This square root of 40, we can break that down into a 4 and a 10. So really we have 2 times the square root of 10, and then this x doesn't have enough x's to square root, so that x stays with the 10 over 5x. At this point, anything on the outside of your square root could simplify. So you do want to look at the 2 and the 5. If that was, let's say, a 2 over a 4, you would want to reduce that like you would a fraction. But the 2 over 5 doesn't reduce. You've got this x, but there's not an x out front to reduce that with. So this is our final answer. And that's it for the intro video.